What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Today, let's look to the future and see which stars could follow Olivier Giroud to MLS this summer. Some of this is going to come from a place of sourcing and news, and at the very least, educated guesses for all. But before we get into it, I kind of want to talk about the topic as a whole, right? Like, so for me, MLS should always be a place where big stars kind of come, even if it's post prime, end of prime, whatever. I feel really strongly about this, right? I understand the worries about shedding the retirement league uh, league label. Um, speaking to GMs for the anonymous GM survey we did, a lot of people, when they were critical about Inter-Miami, they were saying, yeah, look, now we look like a retirement league again. For me, I don't think that those are good faith arguments. I think the people yelling at and looking at Inter-Miami, even just looking right at that team, right, yeah, they signed Busquets, Alba, Messi, and, and them, and Suarez. They also signed $8 million on Federico Redondo, $5 million on Farias, um, $3 million on, on Diego Gomez and $7 million on Tomas Abeles. That's four extremely highly rated young players. So anybody who's going to yell about that and be ignorant about that, you're not going to win them over anyway. They have their own stance. So I don't, like, I, I understand the worry, but I just don't think that it's real, right? Like, so, again, like, it's important to focus on development both domestically with the academy system and in terms of recruitment of getting higher levels of players from all around the world. It, South America is the obvious one, but they, uh, MLS clubs have expanded to Europe, to Asia, to Africa, to be able to bring in more players, um, bring in higher quality young players. That is first and foremost, most important, but stars do still sell. I'll tell you like just anecdotally talking to friends that maybe don't follow MLS so closely. They would ask me about Gareth Bale. They would ask me about Jared Onjikiri. They asked me about, you know, players that they've seen. And again, whether they're huge, even European soccer fans either, they know who these players are. And that's important for me, right? Like, I broke the Gareth Bale news. I've never had more people reach out to me that aren't MLS fans, <laughs> like, in my life. You're like, oh my God, that was you? It's like, hey, well, you know, Brendan Aronson or Ricardo Pepe or any of these other deals that were, quite honestly, more impactful and more important for the growth of the league and everything else. People care about stars, man. People care about who they know. Like, look. In Brazil, they have old stars come back to their league too. And nobody's calling them a retirement league because Brazil um, exports more soccer players around the world than anything else. It's like the best thing that they export as, as a country. Um, Edson Cavani is playing for Boca Juniors. Nobody looks at Boca as, you know, oh my God, they signed a couple older players, right? Like again, MLS absolutely was a retirement league 15 years ago. But got news for you, man. There's, there's new takes. Like the leagues evolve and this league has continued to grow. Stars plus development is the most important because if you just wanted to watch a league for development, if you just wanted to watch a league for only young players and looking at the next generation, why wouldn't you watch the Argentine league instead of MLS? Or why wouldn't you watch the Brazilian league or the Dutch league or insert any of these leagues that have better stars, honestly, better young players coming through their leagues more often? Like if that's all you want, then MLS isn't for you. So like let MLS be unique. Let MLS differentiate state differentiate itself from uh, other leagues in the world stars do move the needle stars don't always necessarily sell and that's why you need to be selective about the exact play you get this doesn't this like everything has nuance this doesn't mean just go sign anybody with a name and bring them in instead of you know a 21 year old from brazil or a 21 year old from argentina or serbia or wherever right like nycfc went away from that model in the past because it didn't guarantee them either a trophy or increased profits to cover the big salaries of David Villa, Frank Lampard, and Andre Pirlo. Those are three of the most recognizable stars of their era, right? Like, and it didn't lead them to like total on-field success, and it definitely did not lead them to profitab profitability. But again, the league is at a different place right now. I, I look at Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and that was kind of like the perfect new era of my MLS of it work. He was so good on the field. He was he absolutely embraced that Hollywood lifestyle. He was a star off the field, everything else. I think he was 10 of 10 in terms of his signing. I think Olivier Giroud is going to be in that mold. That doesn't mean that you just go sign anybody. Like my favorite player of all time, Steven Gerrard, didn't work out. Um, I, heard, I heard a story that there was a British fan that was just vacationing in Los Angeles and he ran into Steven Gerrard at like a, a nightclub or at a dinner or so, something like that. And they happen to be in the bathroom together, which I'd, I'd imagine is a very bad time to stop a global superstar when he's at the urinal or something. But whatever. Um, Steven Gerrard, man of the people, responded to the guy. And he's like, oh, he's like, man, like I wanted to come see. Uh, maybe I'll have to see one of your games while I'm out here. When are you next play? And Gerrard just like looks at him and goes, it's not worth it, mate. We're shite. And then walked away. Like, so not everybody has the right mentality. or Not everybody has the right idea or their experience isn't what they thought it was going to be in MLS. That doesn't mean you should stop trying. So again, like I do hope that the league still goes for stars. Hopefully younger and younger, and there's going to be some younger options on this list, but that's just my whole spiel. I do, I, I love the diversity in terms of ages, nationalities, quality, uh, playing styles, all of the rest. Like, MLS should not be only one thing. 
It should be all of these things. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of teams. Miami can do what Miami are doing, and they're bringing in young players, right? LAFC and LA Galaxy, they have uh, the recruitment edge of having Los Angeles. That's why Gareth Bale can come on, on a Max Tam deal. That's why Hugo Lloris is here on 350000 Giorgio Chiellini, et cetera, et cetera. Like, I think this is more fun, and I hope to see some of these stars follow Drew to MLS this summer. Okay, first big name star that might come to MLS this summer. Let's let's start with a layup, an easy one. Olivier Giroud, LAFC. Um, we've covered this plenty, so I'm going to be quick here. As I've reported, LAFC is finalizing a deal to sign France's all-time leading scorer, Olivier Giroud. He's a World Cup winner. He's gone to two World Cup finals. He's going to play this summer's Euros. Uh, and then he's going to join his good friend, Hugo Lloris, in Los Angeles. I think it's a big win all around. Um, we talk about how, like, I've said it a few times, I think he's going to be more slots on Ibrahimovic than, say, Gerard or Dos Santos or Christian Teo or whatever, right? Like... So let's look at the stats again. 81st percentile in Serie A among forwards and goals. 94th percentile in assists. He's lower in shot creating actions, but that's fine given the one-man wrecking crew that Denny Buanga is. And I think that Olivier Drew just fits his attack so well. This is a phenomenal fit. Will be a phenomenal fit. I hope that, uh, you know, that contract gets signed soon so we can talk about it officially instead of just reporting. But if you're going to talk about it, just report it. Just, you know, just get, throw me a bone here. <laughs> the Tom Bogan report the Athletic, all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, Olivier Giroud. Uh, there's not going to be a name bigger that comes out MLS this summer. Like, I'd be absolutely shocked because Olivier Giroud is a huge name. He's an absolute legend, right? France's all-time leading scorer. This is awesome. I can't wait. There's another big name that could maybe, probably not, but it's possible that could come to MLS this summer. Timo Werner. He's on loan at Tottenham Hotspur from RB Leipzig. Um, he was linked loosely with the New York Red Bulls. I can tell you with, via sourcing, that interest is very real. Uh, the team, you know, they under, like, it, it's super fluid, right? Like, he's still 28. He Tottenham have a 50, uh, purchase option of 15 million pounds. So for a big six team in England, even if he's not playing a ton, 15 million for a rotation striker is not expensive. Even for Tottenham, who I've been surprised that that they haven't had more money to spend in the transfer. They've been at least more cautious than other teams in the money. I'm sure Spurs fans would like me to hammer it a bit harder, um, but we'll leave it at that, right? So look, again, like he just turned 28. That's not expensive for a player of his stature, even if it's been diminished the past couple of years. Um Look, if Timo Werner, like this would be a home run signing for the New York Red Bulls. He's got two goals and two assists in around 550 minutes with Tottenham after joining on loan this winter. I think he'd rip it in MLS. I think he'd be super fun for the Red Bulls. I think that he'd be really, really nice next to Emil Forsberg again. Like Timo Werner was incredible with Forsberg at Leipzig for, you know, most of the last, whatever, eight years, I think. I know he went to Chelsea and now he's at Spurs. Uh, but for the most part, he's known for his excellence at, at RB Leipzig. And if you just kind of go back last year, nine goals and four assists in 2,000 Bundesliga minutes with Red Bull Leipzig. Two, uh, two years before that, 2020-21, his first season with Chelsea, and the Chelsea move was a flop, right? Six goals and 12 assists in, two points in, in, in 2,500 Premier League minutes. And the year before that, he had 28 goals and eight assists in 34 appearances in the Bundesliga. That's elite, man. Like, MLS, yeah, newsflash, MLS isn't as high level as Bundesliga or Premier League. I think he'd be phenomenal here. And, yeah, I don't care about the Red Bulls. Kind of bad luck with, with attackers recently um, outside of, of Lewis Morgan when, he, when he's fit. And Emil Forsberg were coming in now. Um, this would be incredible. I do hope it happens. I don't think it's going to just because if I had to play it safe, I'd say that. Um, honestly, I'm just glad we're even talking about this. Like, signing Emil Forsberg was a big step at his age. Werner would be too. These are actual win now signings rather than just trying to sign a young player that they could sell for more in the future. So I'm very excited with the direction that the Red Bulls are going in. Again, if we got to see if this is just a one off, hey, Red Bull all in the family, maybe we can get Timo Werner too. Or if that means that they're looking for an in prime DP forward this summer. I really hope it's the latter, but either way, it's, it's promising. Another big name player that could come to MLS this season. This one I think is much more likely than Timo Werner. Mexico legend Memo Ochoa. Memo Ochoa is currently playing in Italy. It's been announced that he's going to leave the club at the end of the season when his contract expires. Yes, he turns 39 in the summer. And yes, we've seen us, some teams go down this path with older goalies. But I don't really care. I would love to see Memo Ochoa in MLS. Um, he didn't look great for Mexico in the Nations League. Got to be honest. Got to put all his qualifiers out there. The goalkeeping strength in MLS is really strong right now. And smarter teams don't spend a ton of money on their goalkeepers. But Roman Berkey was worth... Every goddamn penny that St. Louis City paid for him. And he's significantly better than Memo Ochoa, I will say. Younger, higher profile, everything else. But at least that still gives you the thought, the idea that, that maybe Memo Ochoa could be a good signing on the right price. Big time international goalies, I've talked to agents about this uh, and intermediaries. Like, they need to understand that they can't come here for more than Max Tam. Like, there aren't teams giving out DP spots to goalkeepers. It just is what it is, right? Like, so... Memo Ochoa, I think he would understand that by now, but, you know, he'd probably be more valuable to Club America or, or Chivas or somebody, one of the heavyweights in Mexico. I do hope he comes here. I think that'd be really, really fun. 
Um, he's a five-time Gold Cup winner with Mexico. He's got 150 caps or whatever. He won the CONCACAF Champions Cup, then the Champions League in with Club America 2005-06. Like, this dude would just be a star. Um, I was dubious of Hector Herrera signing in, in Houston. And again, I don't, um, this isn't, this is like a lazy comparison just because the two Mexico legends play different positions, all that. I was dubious of that. And that worked out to be phenomenal. That doesn't automatically mean Memo Ochoa will, but I will say if you said this to me this time, 12 to 18 months ago, I would have said that stupid idea of signing somebody like Memo Ochoa. You could get better players for less money. Now, I think it'd be cool. Let's see what happens. Another player that flirted with MLS in the winter, um, Divock Origi. Uh, he's on the outs at AC Milan, Nottingham Forest. He was on loan at Nottingham Forest. Wasn't really getting a run of games. Some injuries has, has put him back in the team. But look, I think it's pretty clear that he's going to leave Milan in the summer. They've been trying to offload him for, for a little while now, from what I've heard. Uh, people working around this deal, people with knowledge of this deal, they said that his salary asks were pretty crazy, from what I heard. Um, I don't know exactly what that means in terms of number. Maybe it was just crazy compared to what LAFC or any other MLS team wanted to offer. Orlando City had his discovery rights, but that was more for a discovery rights play. So a lot of teams sniffed around. He was offered around MLS. Nobody bought, nobody bid on it. So if he just wants money, maybe there will be more of that in the Middle East or, or Turkey or or a different league, a different league that, that would outbid MLS club. But if he wants to live in America and play in a decent league and, and still get paid pretty well, maybe he comes to MLS this summer. Again, like this, a lot of, there's a lot of ifs around here. If he he changes his salary demands is kind of the biggest one here. Um, I think that there'll be plenty of teams that want to forward the summer. With Teams always want DP forwards. And, and so we'll see what happens. As a Liverpool fan, I would love Divock Origi to come to MLS. I'm, I'm, I thought he was going to work out at AC Milan, but again, he's a cold hero at Liverpool. So I understand my biases there. But Divock Origi, that's still like, look, it's not... It's not impossible at, at the very least. Again, like I think this is something that if he changes his salary request, could happen. One more big name forward, Mikel Antonio. His contract with West Ham expires this summer. Maybe the Jamaican international comes comes and plays in CONCACAF for his club. Um, I don't know what the market is going to be here in terms of a player who's had the injury history he had. But when he's available, man, he's class. And like I like his physicality would would work so well in this league just because of how physical MLS can be, how transition based. I don't know exactly how that's going to age for a 34 year old. But again, Jamaica, West Ham star, Mikel Antonio. This would be a lot of fun to see him in MLS. And look, he's this is where we're going to get into like this is the player that I'm I'm making the exception on kind of like for the summer where you just go down the list of expiring contracts on on, on Google or whatever and you find two, some players who who are out of contract. Mikel Antonio is one that made the most sense just doing eye test. Like I'm sure that there's plenty of others. You can go look at that yourselves. Uh, but I think Mikel Antonio would make sense in MLS and and we'll see if something happens this summer. <clears throat> All right, I've got one more section here. These players I don't think would be coming to MLS this summer. Um, in fact, two of them, absolutely not. Um, but I'm going to say these are three players, or the, the first two players at least, are, are guys that I 1,000% expect to be in MLS at some point within the next few years. First, Antoine Griezmann. You know, you don't need the, the the leading MLS insider to tell you that. Antoine Griezmann, he's asked about it every year, and every year he says how he can't wait to go to play in MLS one day. He's a, he's a big NBA fan, all these things. Uh, like he's having an, an incredible season at Atletico Madrid. I think he's going to age super well, so I'm not worried about any of that. Again, I think this summer is going to be too soon for Antoine Griezmann, uh, just given how great he's been with Atletico Madrid, his age, and the pro the price, the profile, everything else. Like, But when he wants to come, he's going to come. Inter Miami, Los or LA Galaxy, LAFC. Those are the three teams. Again, he's, he's one of those guys like Olivier Giroud. You, you just assume that that's kind of where he's going to end up. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe another team makes a pitch. Hell, Sporting Kansas City, we're really in the mix for Cristiano Ronaldo. That is not overblown. That was all real. So maybe Antoine Griezmann can go somewhere else in MLS. But if we're going to be honest, if we're going to let the most likely deduction, Miami, you know, from all those connections, and and Los Angeles again. He's very close with Carlos Vela. Um, I know that Carlos Vela currently doesn't have a team, but we'll see if maybe they're going to play again one more time. Another player that I think is going to play in MLS one day. It's not it's not if, it's when. Mexico star Chucky Lozano. Again, I could be getting ahead of myself, but last summer, the LA Galaxy... They thought that they were going to sign him, man. They really did. Uh, they tried really hard. He ends up leaving Napoli to go to PSV. LA Galaxy, from people I talked to at the club, if he if they got past the European window, so he signed for PSV on deadline day, if they got past the European window closing, they were like, he's coming to us. Would he make sense for San Diego FC? I think so. I, he'd make sense for any MLS team. But if, if LA Galaxy were trying to get him, and now they don't have the DP spots, they have the wingers, uh, San Diego in that same area, right? Southern California, near Mexico, California living that, that great lifestyle, that great weather. I'd be, I'd be chasing him. And wouldn't he make a ton of sense as the absolute 
you know, fran- uh, club leading star for an expansion season? I think so. So Chucky Lozano is at PSV. He's at Napoli. Um, I think that he's going to come down less one day. We'll just see when. Lastly, and maybe this is just coming from my heart because another CONCACAF connection, Kaylor Navas. Um, I would love to see him in MLS. There have been very, very limited, you know, looks for him to the league. But most of those looks have started with, I'd be open to MLS for, insert a number well above the max tan threshold. And it's had to be kind of explained, like, hey, goalkeepers, they don't give DP contracts. Like, I'm sorry, you're one of the best goalkeepers in CONCACAF history, right? You've, you've accomplished so many things, Madrid, PS, PSG, everywhere he's been, he's still an absolute star, all this. But it's just the way of the world in MLS is that goalkeepers, for the most part, don't get that contract. And, and nobody really came looking um, for that contract. So if and when Kaylor Navas is at a point of his career where there aren't a ton of other big money options, again, I'm... I'm player, I'm pro player. Go get your money, man. Like whatever decision you want to make, I don't blame you at all. Who knows what we would all do in their position. So this isn't like, this is just how the, how it things are. Not like, oh, it's stupid that he didn't take a, you know, a sweetheart cut rate deal to come to MLS just so I want to watch him every weekend. No, obviously this is whatever he wants. It's just the way that things are. So if there's a point towards the end of his career here that he decides, you know what? 1.7 million and playing at insert any MLS team that wants him. Yeah, I think I could do that. Then I would, I think that could happen, but again, I, like like similar to the Divock Origi stuff, I think it's just going to come down to whether or not the player accepts kind of the reality of the offers that are and aren't coming around MLS. I thought I'd do it for me today. Um, this is kind of just a preliminary list. I hope to have something even more substantial as we get closer to the summer transfer window. I just wanted to put this on your radar. This is like a little appetizer, just little pigs in a blanket, mozzarella. Stick. I don't know. I don't go to enough fancy parties, and, and and I like I like simple food sometimes. So I don't I don't have a ton of great great options off the top of my head. Uh, this is just a bit of an appetizer. Again, some of this was known. Again, Griezmann, you know it. Olivier Giroud, I've talked about it so many times, um, and, and breaking the news and reporting out the news. So again, I think it's exciting. Going back to the top, I really really hope that MLS teams still target and continue to sign big name players because I think that's super fun. Maybe that's just me being selfish as somebody who wants the league to be as interesting as possible. Um, the league is continuing to grow. I can't wait to see what happens over the next few years again. And I hope that this will always be a home for these big name players who want to come uh, experience the American lifestyle. And again, I hope that maybe players are starting to come by more at 26 and 28 more. Like Joseph Panso wasn't a huge, isn't a huge name to this market before he got to the galaxy and he's going to be a star. I hope that there's going to be a mix of all of this because that's the best way to grow.